Welcome to chapter 17 on antimicrobials, antifungals, and antivirals. This will be in two parts because it's a long lecture. So here are our learning objectives, being able to explain the difference between pathogenic and non-pathogenic bacteria, describing various forms of bacteria that are pathogenic in the body, describing factors that are important in choosing an antibiotic or antimicrobial agent, being able to explain the difference between bacteriostatic and bactericidal agents, and explaining how bacteria can acquire resistance to specific antibiotics. We also need to know why antibiotics, antimicrobials, antivirals, and antifungals may be used prophylactically and when the prophylactic use is inappropriate being able to explain why some infections are best treated with multi-drug or being able to identify some infections that we sometimes treat with multi-drugs, also identifying and classifying by families, and providing patient education for compliance. So major antibiotic families were discovered before 1955 by screening thousands of cultures from a variety of sources. Antibiotics inhibit the growth or kill other microorganisms. So it's important in infections due to microorganisms, fungi, or viruses. We're going to talk about disinfectants, germicides, and antiseptics used in a medical setting. Uh, we use those on a regular basis. So there are common side effects with an antibiotic. Um, most commonly, we see nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea, as well as skin rashes as common side effects, but these are all listed. Uh, photosensitivity is another one. Um, many antibiotics, you want to stay out of the sun. So there is a difference between normal flora, right, and the pathogenic flora. So the, uh, when microorganisms leave their free environment and enter a susceptible host, they can become pathogenic in nature, which means that they are capable of causing disease. It doesn't mean that they all do, but they are capable of causing disease. Whereas normal flora are uh, many microorganisms that normally are living on our skin and in our bodies, and they can be beneficial to us. So we know that microbiology is the study of microscopic organisms, and here's a list of some microscopic organisms. Okay, so identification of microorganisms, they can be, again, pathogenic, which means disease-causing or normal flora, which we just discussed. We also um, identify them by their shapes and also need for oxygen. So aerobic, anaerobic means that um, aerobic means that they require oxygen to live and anaerobic means that they require an oxygen free environment. So we look at this when we are identifying the microorganisms. Antimicrobials versus antibiotics. Antimicrobials destroy microorganisms or inhibit microorganism growth. Um, they can include antibiotics, uh, bacteriostatics, and bactericidal agents. Um, antimicrobials are a broader class than antibiotics. They include antibiotics as well as drugs such as sulfur and mercury, and they reach target cells either through the absorption of the drug at the site of application or through the distribution of a drug by way of circulatory system. So antibiotics are rarely given prophylactically, except in the cases of surgery or sometimes in exposure to an unusual um, disease. And it's important when choosing the antibiotic that it's chosen carefully. So it's important to uh, know the use of the antibiotic as opposed to other forms of treatment, to look at the proper family and type of antibiotic that for what we're treating, and there are antibiotics that are misused, and this is why we've ended up having situations where we have resistance. And so, so if we prescribe the incorrect antibiotic, 
or we prescribe for a virus that will not respond, then our body makes resistance to that specific antibiotic strain. So broad spectrum antibiotics are effective against a wide, wide range of uh, microbes and prescribe, again, we prescribe them only when indicated by specific disease. And it's important to remember that fever is only a symptom. So it doesn't mean that uh, because we have a fever that we're automatically going to prescribe an antibiotic because fevers are also present in the viral infections and antibiotics, as we know, are ineffective for treatment of viral infections. So some important things to note about penicillins. They are typically the safest antibiotics available, but if a patient is allergic to one penicillin, then they're considered to be allergic to all penicillins. So any person allergic to one penicillin should be considered allergic to all, even if there's a mild reaction. So it's important to have that noted in the documentation in the patient file. Um, and also it's important to know that effectiveness of birth control pills decrease when certain penicillins are used concurrently. So again, uh, the doctor will review the file and look to see if the patient is currently on a birth control regime and there are certain penicillins that they then would not prescribe. Um, because it would reduce the effectiveness. So cephalosporins, um, cephalosporins weaken cell walls and they can cause the death to the bacteria. They're closely related to penicillins. Um, we do have them grouped into four. And uh, if it's taken orally, it's important with cephalosporins that we take with food because there's a lot of stomach upset involved. We do see that very commonly. Um, it's also very important to watch patients that have had reactions to penicillin when you are administering cephalosporins. It's also noted that we refrigerate any cephalosporin suspensions and some cannot be combined with alcohol and this would be something that would be very important in patient education. So macrolides, these are broad spectrum antimicrobials. Um, they usually end in myosin and you can see some down here, erythromycin, biaxin, zithromax. Uh, you usually take the erythromycin on an empty stomach, uh, but it can be taken with meals if you do note any upset stomach. So tetracyclines, um, they do have a, some adverse reactions such as photosensitivity and also the staining of developing teeth. And I've included right here, you can see the image of the discoloration of teeth. Um, so we also do not give them with certain supplements or pro, uh, milk products. And they do come in short acting, intermediate acting and long acting. So the aminoglycosides, um, these are more of our heady hitters, and um, we usually reserve them for more serious or life-threatening infections. We can use topical aminoglycosides, and they can be used relatively safely. Um, another thing that we look at with this is we want to instruct the patient to report any dizziness or unsteadiness or hearing loss. These are things that can commonly be seen and we want to educate our patient to make sure to report those as soon as possible. And down here we have some listed, sorry, neomycin is one of uh, a basic one. Tobramycin is also another one. So quinolones, these are broad spectrum antibiotics, but they usually have mild side effects. Uh, we do not take the ciprofloxin with milk products or antacid or iron supplements or magnesium laxatives. And uh, it's important to note that children younger than 16 to 18 are not supposed to be given the ciprofloxin. It can cause cartilage damage in these younger children and some here we have Bloxin, we have Cipro, and several others. 
Okay, so here's where I'm going to pause and start with part two.